and assess it. You may have other options. Your first job is to make the multitasking transparent. Multitasking will slow your program and stop people from making progress. Don't allow it. 13.5. How to start a program with more people than you need. You're starting a program. Your organization recognizes you have a program. Your management team makes sure you have all the people you need right now. And your program is not ready for them. Your eventual 150 or 200 person program does not need more than a couple of five to seven person teams right now, maybe even fewer. What do you do? Ask the people to self-organize into collocated cross-functional teams. If you're working on extensions to an already existing product, ask them to select a backlog of defects from the defect tracking system. Their job in the next two weeks is to one, fix the defects, and two, determine what they do not have as a process or tools for proceeding for the program. If you're working on a brand new product, ask them to work on an already existing product with the same tools they'll be using for the new product. If they'll be working on a brand new product with brand new languages and tools, ask them to create the equivalent of Hello World with the new languages and tools. Maybe they discover they have technical debt in unit or system tests. That means the technical debt goes on the program backlog at the very top. Maybe they discover they don't have sufficient access to the build system or the version control system. Good to know now before they start on features. Or they will discover they need training or new machines or licenses for the new tools. Good to know before they start in earnest. Maybe they cannot create collocated cross-functional teams. They get to decide how to organize themselves or tell you or a project manager that they have a problem they need help solving. The idea is that at the end of the first two-week iteration, you know where the initial set of team-based risks are. Every project and program has them. The larger the program, the more the risks hide, so Murphy can spring them on you just when you don't need them. When you have everyone, let all those people discover the risks for you. Now you have fodder for your risk list, and the teams know their impediments. Everyone wins. Paul Ellerby, a program manager, has the following suggestion. Consider a hackathon. I have had excess team members do a hackathon to start building automated test approaches and harnesses, prototype new ways of getting to the desired functionality, maybe start the continuous delivery pipeline. There are many things these folks can do to benefit the program. You could also do a Hudson Bay start on the program itself, as mentioned in my book, Manage It, Your Guide to Modern Pragmatic Project Management. But you almost certainly do not need all 200 people for that. Whatever you do, do not let all those people hamper the program's progress by starting on the program unless you really can use them all. As part of this first iteration, ask the program product owner to build an agile roadmap and backlog. In my experience, too few program product owners are ready with an Agile roadmap at the start of the program. But to not have any idea where you're going? Not good. If you start in with Iteration 0, you can spend your life in Iteration 0, Iteration minus 1, and so on. That's death for your program. I like to spend a day or so starting, but not much more. Even for large programs, people need to recognize the urgency of starting and delivering. Once the program product owner has the Agile roadmap, all the product owners can work with this product owner to generate the first ranked backlog for all the teams. Now at the end of the first iteration, the program has these deliverables. Everyone knows where they have technical debt in unit or system tests. Everyone knows if they have adequate tooling for working on the product. If they are geographically distributed, they know if they can communicate with each other. The program product owner has an Agile roadmap. The product owners have ranked backlogs for their teams. The teams have practiced working together, releasing something. The core team has completed the program charter, so the teams now know what the program vision and release criteria are. Not shabby for two weeks, is it? 13.6. Principles of Solve Program Problems 1. Make sure you know what's going on with the people on your program team. 
use one-on-ones to solve problems privately. The principle is, face-to-face conversation is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information. 2. Do not start a program with more people than you can plan for at the beginning. Find a way for those people to contribute while you get ready. The principle is, build integrity in. 3. Make sure your program team can meet in person to learn how to work together. The principle is, face-to-face conversation is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information. Chapter 14. Integrating Hardware into Your Program When your product has more than software, it has mechanical or hardware components, you might not see how to use agile and lean approaches to see the product evolve and get feedback on it. You might not be able to use agile and lean externally for customers. You might only be able to use agile and lean internally to help create the best product possible. You can use the principles of agile and lean to see product and provide feedback using incremental design, integrating early, and seeing demonstrations of the entire product as early and often as possible. The only thing that's inherently sequential with non-software parts of a product is when they are ready for physical form. Every time the engineers create a physical form for a part, it costs money. That money is called non-recurring engineering, or NRE, expenses. NREs are part of your program's costs. You, as a program manager, might have to manage those costs as well as other costs you have. It's possible those costs are a risk for your program. 14.1. Hardware risks are different than software risks. Hardware and software product development both face common risks. We might not know how to solve the problem. We need more research before development. We might have to iterate to understand how best to solve the problem or problems. We need to obtain feedback often enough to know if we are solving the problems in a way that works. The risks associated with hardware are different than those associated with software. The problem with hardware is that the hardware cycles are not homogeneous. That is, the risks of mechanical work are on a different cycle than the risks of analog or digital work. The different kinds of hardware iterate with simulators at different times. They go to physical form at different times. One big question for your program is this. Will you gain any benefit from early and often physical form for learning? The program will incur more cost. Is it worth the value? 14.2. Understand cost and value for hardware. Back-end software is learning, not construction, from Section 7.1, I discussed the idea that software is learning, never construction. Much of hardware development is also learning. In addition to the learning, part of hardware development is being ready for manufacture, for fabrication of the final design. In highly complex hardware programs, design for manufacturing might be its own small program. Because we learn so much when we marry the software with the hardware, one question to ask is this. When is the right time to start developing physical prototypes? The prototype will have some cost. What is the value the program could receive from that learning? Often, the hardware and software teams use design by contract to determine what to do where, the interface between the hardware and software. The earlier the hardware people deliver prototypes, the faster the teams can learn if the design is correct. The teams shorten the feedback loops. Is that learning worth the cost of the prototype? One way to think about this value is to consider the cost of delay. How much longer will it take to finish the product if the software teams can't start until hardware is done? What if hardware has to revise their designs based on feedback from software? Here's an example of how to consider costs. Imagine you have one hardware team and three software teams, a relatively small program. What is the cost for you to wait until the ninth month of a 12-month program for a prototype? Maybe your prototypes cost $10,000 each. Assume you get two prototypes, one for the hardware team and one to share with the software teams, a total of $20,000. Let's assume you find at least two problems in the first week that create a one-week delay in your program. Assume people cost $75 per loaded labor hour. 
you have 16 people in the software teams and 5 people in the hardware team. That's a total of 21 times $75 times 40 for a one-week delay, $63,000. Compare that cost to iterating earlier on the hardware. I have no idea if you can create a prototype for $10,000. Your NREs might be much higher. It's possible that a chip could cost upwards of a million dollars and take at minimum six weeks. In that case, see some alternatives in Manage Hardware Risks in Section 14.8. If you have a program of about 12 months, do you need to see a physical prototype before the last three months, a traditional time to prototype and then pilot? It depends on your risks. You will incur some form of cost, NRE, whenever you have hardware to go physical form. The question is this, what is the value of that physical form to the overall program? What are the risks of iterating in physical form? Remember, if you go to physical form earlier, you might be able to end the program earlier. That's because the product is sufficient as is. That doesn't happen often, but it does happen. 14.3 14.3. Understand each part's value. Let's assume you're developing a robot. The machine has mechanical arms, a custom board with the robot's operating system on it, and one FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array, to customize the robot's use for you. You will have these engineering components for your robot program. Mechanical work to create the arms. Silicon board. Operating System, FPGA. The software teams can create the operating system in an agile way because the operating system is all software. However, the operating system has interactions with the board, the FPGA, and how the arms work. The software teams can't wait until the mechanical and engineering teams complete their work. The software teams need to start work now. None of the components have much value by themselves. However, they have tremendous value when they all work together. The product roadmap will specify the relative value of each component. The teams need the roadmap to determine when to have each component and feature set of each component ready for the other teams. This is tricky. The teams need to deliver the most important and valuable components first. Figure 14.1 in the supplemental materials demonstrates what a first quarter roadmap might look like. My robot experience is quite old, so this is a fabricated roadmap. Because the mechanical, electrical, FPGA, and software can't integrate from the beginning, this roadmap looks a little like a Kanban with swim lanes. You might not like this roadmap. You might like to organize your roadmap in some other way. Here are the principles I used. Make the interdependencies transparent. Demonstrate the product as early as possible even if it's via a breadboard. Notice that some of the basic hardware and mechanical work takes just one two-week iteration. If the product owner realizes that the work will take longer, maybe the people who make the parts the team expected to use no longer produce those parts. He or she would change the roadmap to show that delay. The roadmap makes the value visible. There will be feature sets you don't need at the start of the program. If the product owner and the teams work by value, It'll be easier to see when it's time to invest in physical form and when you can wait. 14.4. See the work. Sometimes the mechanical and electrical engineering teams can feel like a black hole to the rest of the organization. I've heard statements such as, We're working on the keyboard. We'll have it for you in a couple of months. They might. My experience is what we get in a couple of months is the first prototype of several we need. That's not finished work. One way to see the work is to ask the engineers to use a Kanban board. I recommend each component have its own Kanban to see the work in progress. A mechanical engineering Kanban might look like figure 14.2 in the supplemental materials. A silicon engineering Kanban might look like figure 14.3. An FPGA Kanban might look like figure 14.4. The FPGA Kanban might look much more like a regular software Kanban up until you make the decision to go to physical form. 14.5. Design incrementally and iteratively. 
Mechanical engineers and hardware engineers iterate on their designs. It's easy and inexpensive to iterate with simulators and emulators. Mechanical engineers use simulators to build and check their work. So do analog and digital engineers. They can use a simulator to walk step by step through their part of the product. If you ask the mechanical and electrical engineers to design iteratively and incrementally before they commit to physical form, you can then ask for continuous design review. 14.6. Use continuous design review. Mechanical and hardware engineers can use continuous integration for their work as they simulate. They can apply those principles of seeing feedback continuously with the rest of the program when they use continuous design review. In Encourage Iterative and Incremental Architecture, from Section 12.3, I suggested the teams evolve the picture of the architecture before finalizing their architectural decisions. Your software team might choose to have a design review of the architecture after three features. Read Manage It, Your Guide to Modern Pragmatic Project Management for a fuller discussion of implementing several features before selecting an architecture. You can do that for the hardware pieces of your product. Depending on how long the engineers expect the hardware efforts to take, you might ask them to review the designs every week or every other week if they work in two-week time boxes. As the engineers modify their original designs and determine what they can do in the mechanical or hardware parts of the product, they can explain their decisions to the software feature teams and or architects. 14.7. Integrate hardware often. The cost of moving to physical form is high with mechanical and silicon components. However, if the program waits until the very end to marry all the components into a product, you will encounter the 90% done schedule game. That's where you have finished 90% of the work and have the other 90% remaining. The more integration points your program has, the easier it is to see the entire product, not just one component. Hardware and mechanical engineering are on different cycles from each other, and they are each different from software. Even with each discipline, the risks are different when the teams collaborate together on one deliverable and when the entire program has to collaborate to create a product. The engineering teams simulate to see problems in their own work and solve those problems. Each team is ready for integration at a different time. They can't integrate until they go to fabrication. That changes the feedback cycle or cycles for the entire program. Questions you can ask. Is there an interim physical form that would provide us value? How much does that form cost us to create? How long is it that prototype good for? If there is not an interim physical form that would provide us value, how can we obtain value and reduce risks with what kind of form or demonstration? Here are some sample problems you could test for and avoid with early prototypes. The footprint is too large slash too small. The design by contract work you thought was good turns out to be wrong. You have a design that works, but doesn't produce the product you want. Those are examples. You may have other problems. 14.8. Manage hardware risks. Because the hardware parts run on different cycles than the software parts, we have at least two ways to manage these risks, set-based design and landing zones. In set-based design, the designers iterate on the design. As they proceed, they rule in or out designs that do not intersect with the rest of the design components. In landing zones, the designers discuss the parameters of what makes a successful design and then converge on that success. Both of these appear to be more like implement several features and see what architecture emerges rather than design up front. It's also about using the intelligence of an entire team. There's a third option. Is there a cost-effective way to make a prototype that can provide you with feedback without having all the properties? For example, can you use a 3D printer to check the physical footprint even if you can't check heat dissipation? I don't know if that would work for your program or would be a waste of time. I do know that 3D printing is much faster than going to fab for many parts of your product. I used a fourth option some years ago. 
We wanted to simulate the traffic on an internal network to see if the design we had would work. I asked about 20 people to meet the architect and me, I was the program manager, in a large conference room. We organized the people according to the types of traffic. We had a metronome to help people walk on time. We simulated the network traffic, what was going on where and when, with people. It wasn't a perfect test, and it told the architect a ton of information about how the software would work with the current hardware. I'm not sure we would do that now. We didn't have adequate simulators back then. At the time, it was a cheap and useful approach to help the architect realize that the hardware would not integrate with the software as he desired. These methods are not infallible. However, they all provide feedback faster and better than waiting till the end of the project or program when you've spent all the money and time and you still don't have hardware that works. 14.9 Develop the software before the hardware is available. I have seen many programs develop the hardware at the same time as the software or even in advance. The software and hardware people agree on designs in advance and write them down. This is a form of design by contract. However, there is another alternative to develop the software before the hardware. One of my reviewers, Ian Brockbank, said it this way. For the last 12 years, I've worked for a company which develops audio chips, which have acquired more and more functionality over the years. We had an implicit assumption that the silicon was the most important part of the development, with software almost as an afterthought. After several projects where the software wasn't ready until a year or more after the silicon, and one program which ended up being canceled after two chips and four years of development, because no one could use it without a major extra investment in software, which the company wasn't able to make, we finally recognized that in some cases there's much more work on the software side than the hardware side. We are now getting to the point of starting software development long before there is hardware available. One of the most important things to do to allow this is to have abstractions, which can act sufficiently well to test the software in advance of the hardware. We use a range of abstractions with different levels of fidelity from a simple array through emulation libraries and simulators to FPGA instantiations of early versions of the chip, and we found you can do a lot with a very low fidelity abstraction. We've developed an advanced chip configuration package in the main using little more than an array behind a mocking layer for the communications. We develop advanced signal processing algorithms for embedded DSP cores with bit exact emulation libraries on the PC. Only once it works in emulation do we consider trying it against real hardware. Of course, this provides a provisional version of the software, which is only as good as the understanding of how the hardware works, so we always need to verify once the real hardware is available. Testing against FPGAs comes next. These allow us to test early versions slash subsets of the chips against the software and allow the interfaces to be validated, debugged, and refined before committing to the expense of a full mask set and fabrication run. It does take work to allow silicon designs to be suitable for FPGA. The porting is a full-time role, even with suitable silicon designs, but it definitely pays for itself if it saves even a single respin which can cost millions of dollars and, even worse, put the program back by months. Once the real silicon returns, there's still further verification work. The timing on FPGA is never exactly the same as the silicon, and there is analog performance to consider as well. But in my experience, even the simplest abstractions can cut out 80 to 90 percent of the dependence on real hardware during development and save months or even years on the project timeline. Ian Brockbank, Private Communication Can you develop the software before the hardware? Is it a possibility for your program? What would have to be true for you to do so? 14.10 Principles of Integrating Hardware into Your Program 1. Decide when it makes sense to move to physical form early and often, or later. The principle is, see the whole. 2. Encourage working product. The principle is, deliver early and often to satisfy the customer. 3. Encourage technical discussion of architecture and design. 
The principle is, continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Chapter 15 Troubleshooting Agile Team Issues As a program manager, you will see many kinds of problems in the teams. Some of them are process problems. How can the team be better at Agile or Lean to deliver value better or faster? Sometimes the people on the teams don't know how to be a team or how to diagnose their team problems. You may see these problems or you may have to ask the team to self-assess to see the problems. You can troubleshoot these problems. Remember, you are a servant leader. Grease the skids, eliminate the impediments, empower people to solve problems themselves. 15.1. The teams are not feature teams. I've seen component teams and single-function teams attempt to work in an Agile way. That might be better than what they did before, but it's not Agile. Unless you release libraries, component teams do not ship running tested features. They need to organize along with several other component teams to release running tested features. If your product is libraries, you need component teams. Single-function teams violate the Agile tenet that the team is cross-functional and has all the roles it needs to finish features. Component teams and single-function teams create interdependencies. If you have a ton of interdependency issues between teams, you might have the problem that teams are organized around architecture and not around features. Most of the component and single-function teams I've seen are a legacy from the organization's waterfall days. How the heck are you going to create features and integrate a feature every day, working across the architecture instead of through it? That is a huge impediment. If you have component teams, it's even more important that they work on small stories. That's because the teams will have a difficult time getting the stories done through the architecture. Don't ask people to reorganize first. Instead, ask people to experiment. I have had good results asking people to experiment to see what works with self-organization, to pair, or to swarm. When you ask, explain why you recommend these alternatives. Multiple eyes on the code. Everyone works together to reduce whip and move a feature across the board, and whatever results you want. 15.1.1. Ask the teams to experiment with self-organization around features. Explain to the teams that this is an experiment that we as an organization are running for the next X weeks. Make X be short, as in one or two weeks. The only measure of success is running tested features. Managers do not compare teams. If managers compare teams, the experiment will not work. This is an experiment that the organization is going to learn from. Some teams will have small and easy features. Some teams will not. This is not a competition. If anyone compares teams, the teams will game this measure and you will lose the learning. Stop multitasking. Get everyone to work on just one project at one time right now. I know this might be the most difficult thing your organization has ever tried. Ignore the fact you need experts everywhere. Assign people to only one project. Ask the component teams to self-organize as feature teams for now. No changing managers, no changing desks. They get to decide how. If you are a manager, no decreeing who is a feature team with whom. If you have single-function teams, ask them to self-organize as feature teams for now. Ask the product owners to make the stories as small as they can make them, preferably one or two team days in size or less. Tell the teams that if they don't have the expert they need for a story, that's okay. They can pair, swarm, or mob together to get the story done, but they are not allowed to interrupt another team. Create an Agile roadmap of the features you want in which internal release. The teams work in their backlog or work in flow for this week or two weeks, not any longer, to see what happens when everyone works in feature teams of their own making and no one multitasks to get features done. Remember, this is an experiment. Have the teams do retrospectives themselves at the end of the short time box so you can see what happens. Managers might need to supply retrospective facilitators. Decide what to do next. This is an experiment. At the end of the experiment, ask the teams to assess the experiment using these questions. 1. What happened? 
2. Were the experimental feature teams able to release features? 3. What happened to the